Hi, my name is Anlene Glass, and I am an environmental health specialist, and I work for the Arkansas Department of Health. Today, I'm going to talk to you, the residents of Hot Spring County, about arsenic exposure. I'm going to talk about it in general, and then I'm also going to talk specifically about your risk here in your place of residence. So this is an outline of what I'm going to talk about today. First, I'm just going to explain what arsenic is and the way we are commonly exposed to it. Then I'm going to talk about the negative health effects that arsenic can have on our bodies. And in light of those effects, how federal and state agencies are going to regulate the public's exposure to arsenic. Then I'm going to talk about what's re most relevant to you, which is the history and risk of arsenic exposure in Hot Spring County, where you live and what you would be concerned about. Then I'm going to talk about how individual characteristics, certain risk factors, can increase your exposure to arsenic in your everyday life. Then I want to touch just a little bit on arsenic safety and how you can prevent exposure and also what to do in the unfortunate case that you are exposed to arsenic. So first, what is arsenic? Arsenic is a natural chemical element and it's found in two forms. Inorganic arsenic is the toxic form of arsenic. So this is found naturally in rock and the earth's crust and soil, and then through human interaction, it can be stirred up into the air or into our water systems. This is the kind of arsenic that is gonna cause negative health effects and be a public health issue. Then there's a second form of arsenic, organic arsenic. This is less toxic, and it's found in animals and plants, specifically fish, so you're going to consume this when you eat seafood, but it's not going to cause health complications. So on this slide, you can see the common routes of exposure, and as I just mentioned, when you eat seafood, you're consuming arsenic, but it's organic, and it rarely results in health complications. One way that we're exposed to inorganic arsenic, the toxic form of arsenic, through inhalation. So through certain occupational or job settings like mining, burning, and pesticide use, arsenic can be introduced into the air and it attaches to dust particles and then we can inhale it into our lungs. The most talked about way that people are exposed to arsenic is through drinking water. So inorganic arsenic can get into our water systems and this is a chemical substance that is regulated by federal and state agencies and it's monitored and reported on every year. But one point that is not always so strictly regulated is well water. Sometimes well water is private and it has never been tested for arsenic so this is kind of an issue of concern when it comes to the public health because there are many people in the U.S. and other countries that are consuming water that has never been tested for any chemical contaminant and we don't actually know what the risk is uh, or how many people in the U.S. are consuming arsenic in this manner. Another point of concern is whenever there's drilling and fracking, you know, they're burying or they're getting into the earth's crust where inorganic arsenic is naturally housed and if there is some sort of way that that is going to get into a water system nearby, if it's going to be able to infiltrate, this can cause there to be elevated levels of inorganic arsenic in drinking water. Now, if something like this happens, what's going to happen to you? If you consume a large amount of inorganic arsenic at once, you're going to have acute arsenic poisoning. You're going to have abdominal problems. You're going to get colon lesions and infections, and that's going to result in bloody diarrhea. You can also have inflammation and renal failure, so kidney failure. You can have heart problems, palpitations, things like that. And if it's really extreme, your body can go into shock. This is a medical emergency. But on the other hand, if you're exposed to a small amount of arsenic every day, then you're going to suffer from the chronic effects of arsenic poisoning, which the characteristic effect is these skin lesions. As you can see in this picture, there are these dark spots that can get on the hands and face of people who are consuming small amounts of arsenic every day. 
This kind of exposure is also correlated to types of cancers. The highest correlations are with skin, lung, and bladder cancer. So chronic exposure to arsenic can cause many health problems. It can also exacerbate hypertension. So that's high blood pressure. Many people are already dealing with high blood pressure aside from what's in their water supply. So this can kind of just make it worse. And you can also get peripheral neuropathy, which is when your hands and your feet are kind of numb. You can't really feel them. You can have heart problems. You can have blood problems, anemia, where your blood cells are depleted. And for pregnant women who are being chronically exposed to arsenic, they can suffer from spontaneous abortions and their children can be born with birth defects or congenital malformations. So arsenic can have all these negative effects, which is why federal and state agencies are going to try to regulate how much arsenic the public is going to be exposed to. So the Environmental Protection Agency, or the EPA, regulates or sets a standard for how much drinking, how much arsenic can be detected in drinking water and it can be considered safe or acceptable. So that standard is now 10 parts per billion or PPB. So county and state agencies are required to measure arsenic in water and report to the EPA, EPA and it has to be less than 10 PPB or the system has to be filtrated. So in an occupational setting, we talked about some jobs that are going to have exposure to arsenic. So OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, sets a limit to the amount of arsenic that can be in the air, that can be inhaled by employees who are working 40 hours a week. There has to be less than 10 micrograms of arsenic in every meter cubed of air. So corporations or companies are required to monitor their air quality and report to OSHA and if it's not less than 10 micrograms per meter cubed then they have to go through cleanup efforts to reduce the amount of arsenic in the air. Now I'm going to talk about what's relevant to you and what might cause you concern. I'm going to talk about arsenic in Hot Spring County. So a historical cause of concern is a bathhouse in Hot Springs, Arkansas. It's called the Arsenic Spring Building. And this is a cold water mineral spring. And the name is somewhat of a misnomer because there has never been any trace amount of arsenic reported in its water. So this, this is a point of confusion and concern with citizens, but it's important to kind of get it out there that this, this water and Hot Spring County water in general does not have arsenic in it. So, the 2017 Annual Drinking Water Report, published by Hot Spring County Water Association, did not report any traces of arsenic found in the water. So, in fact, there were no violations for any chemical contaminant in your water. Your water got a clean bill of health. But it's important to know that there is no, there's no arsenic found in recent history in Hot Spring County water. In fact, there's very little evidence of arsenic in Hot Spring County at all. So the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, has these serious hazard sites, you know, priority hazard sites listed throughout the United States. And many of these are sites that contain arsenic and other hazardous uh, contaminants. So there are 15 of these sites in Arkansas, and as you can see, there are none in Hot Springs County right here. So I hope that through this you can kind of, you know, feel reassured in your general risk of being exposed to arsenic. I do want to talk about individual risk factors that can cause you to have a higher exposure to arsenic in your daily life. So we already kind of talked about occupations, mining, agriculture, you know, drilling, fracking, and also burning wood. So under hobbies, I have woodworking, but this can also be an occupational risk. Uh, there's a preservative that contains these chromated arsenicals, and it's, you know, it's used to preserve wood, and people who are dealing with already treated wood or burning treated wood may be exposed to arsenic because this finish has been applied to the wood. Now, the finish being applied to the wood is highly regulated. You have to have to 
you actually have to be certified through the EPA in order to apply the finish. But people who are working with the wood or burning it, that is less regulated, and that is when we need to kind of take into consideration um, our individual risk and take precautions. There are also some medical risk factors. Some medicines contain arsenic, and that's something that you and your doctor would talk about. And then there's also lifestyle risk factors. So tobacco contains trace amount of arsenic. So every time you smoke a cigarette, you're inhaling trace amounts of arsenic into your lungs. And then we've already kind of talked about if you live in a place where you are drinking well water, depending on where you at, that might not be regulated through government agencies. So that might increase your risk of being exposed to arsenic. I also want to talk about how you can be safe and prevent arsenic exposure in your daily life. So a lot of prevention is done for you if you're using a public water system. We've talked about how that is regulated, how state and county agencies are required to monitor contaminants, and they publish a water quality report. You can access it as a private citizen, and this is all monitored through the AP EPA and all of these agencies. So this is something that's done for you. Also done for you if you work uh, or you live near an occupational setting where there's arsenic risk, the companies and corporations are required to measure air exposure and report to OSHA. So this is a way that your exposure to arsenic is regulated when you don't have to do anything yourself. There are things you can do yourself though. One of the most important things and easiest things to do is just wear a mask. Whenever you are working with wood or anything else, paint, dye that might contain arsenic. So another thing you can do is quit smoking and using tobacco products. This can have numerous positive health effects, but specifically it can also lower your arsenic exposure in your daily life. You can also just research commercial and industrial activity near you. You know, you can look up what kind of corporations are around you and whether or not they're ones that can increase the risk of arsenic exposure in the air that you're breathing. And also, one of the most important things about this presentation, if you drink well water or if you just want to get your own water tested, the Arkansas Water Quality Lab, um, you can go to their website, you can print out a form, and if you send that form in with $30, they will send you a water testing kit. And then you send it back to them, and they will test your water for arsenic and all other sorts of contaminants. It's very easy. The link will be at the end of this slideshow, and it's something that you can do to kind of take power and matters into your own hand and make sure that your exposure to arsenic is under control. So now I want to talk about what to do if you are exposed to arsenic. If you have acute arsenic poisoning, you're going to present with abdominal pain and diarrhea, and you're going to want to go to the doctor or the emergency room, and they're going to be able to detect arsenic in your urine. And the treatment is just supportive care. They can't really remove the arsenic from your body, so they're just going to support you, make sure you're comfortable, make sure you're breathing, and then they're going to try to help you identify the agent that exposed you to arsenic. And the most important thing you can do is just remove that agent and make sure that this doesn't happen again. So if you suspect that you have chronic exposure to arsenic, you can also go to the doctor, but now they're going to try to detect it in your hair and nails. So if it... If arsenic is detected in your hair and nail samples, then that means that you've been exposed for a longer period of time because it stays there longer than it stays in your urine. So the treatment is still just supportive and really important here is to remove the agent of exposure. So say the agent of exposure is in your water. So you can filter arsenic out of your water, you know, if it's a uh, city water system. It might be at the centralized plant. It might be at a point of entry into your house. And if you find there's arsenic in your well at your own private land, then you can install filter systems on your well heads. If you have arsenic at your job, one of the only things you can do personally, individually, is wear a mask to reduce your inhalation. And then, you know, it's going to be reported to OSHA and your company is going to be required to make sure that your arsenic exposure is reduced. 
So in summary, uh, there is a low rate of arsenic exposure in Hot Springs County. So I do not want you to be overly concerned about this, but you do know the risk factors that may increase your personal level of exposure through your occupation, mining, drilling, through your lifestyle, smoking, and well water. And if you have concerns, get your water tested and, you know, be able to recognize the negative health effects, go to your doctor, get treated. These are the things that I want you to take away from this presentation. So I have a list of my references here on these two slides. I want to open the floor for questions at this point. And if you have questions past now, feel free to contact me or the Arkansas Department of Health. I have my contact information, I have the Arkansas Department of Health website, the phone number for the Chemical Materials Division, and then most importantly, I have this website where you can go and get your own water tested through the Arkansas Water Quality Lab. Thank you.